Guys, welcome to the Stephen School Alchemy YouTube channel live stream. So I've got some ashes here. These ashes are from wood and leaves. And I'm distilling water here so that I have good, clean, pure water to work with in my Alchemy with Ashes video production. Now there is some funky stuff that I'm getting out of that water, so that's why I'm distilling it. Good, clean, pure water. That stuff in there is settling out of solution. As the water is subjected to heat, this material precipitates or falls out of solution. Whatever it is, the cloudy material looks undesirable to me. Yeah. Let me just work on my zooming. Okay. Welcome to the Stephen School Alchemy YouTube channel. I'm trying to adjust the zoom. I don't know why when I make it smaller, it goes bigger. All right. Anyway, so I'm distilling water in the Alembic there. And I've got my pot of ashes. I've got some stuff here for filtering, filtration. I've got this, uh, this actually is for making coffee, but it works good for filtration also. And those ashes will need a lot of filtration. Okay, I've got several coffee filters here. This one is actually a reusable coffee filter. I've got... It looks like I've got about 10 of these disposable coffee filters that I'm putting or attempting to put inside of it. And then I got another, um, this is another one of those um, reusable coffee filters. Now for making coffee, I could probably just use the reusable filter by itself, but I'm stacking these up in this as a filter. So two reusable filters and 10 disposable filters in between. That will be used for filtration. And here, once again, is my pot of ashes. All right. So over here we can see I have a large speaker of the distilled water that I'm gonna be using. Now that we've shown that, I can kind of turn it out of the way a bit more. The water drips over the helm into the beaker. Good, clean, pure water. Here I have a, a 600 ml laboratory beaker. 
I am going to add a little bit of this water. And start warming it up. The hot plate is set at 220 degrees Celsius. And the reason I have it at that temp the temperature is to distill the water in the Alembic. If it wasn't for that, I'd probably choose a different temperature to heat this water. Either way, this will be fine. So the coffee, the coffee glass came with the this little spoon that I'm going to use for the ashes. This is alchemy with ashes, wood ashes from wood and leaves and twigs. So I'm going to place the ashes in this beaker with the uh, pure distilled water. Now the goal of this is to remove impurities, this is what I'm doing. Um, the ancient alchemy process of fire and water. So the wood material was burned in fire and now I'm using the water as the second half of the process to purify material. It was burned in fire and now dissolved in water. The water needs to be hot to maximize the dissolution. The material that forms will be caustic. The solution of ashes and water However, I intend to filter all of that caustic material out and end up with an alkaline solution. So we just need to let this warm up and get hot. Now, I'm going to add more ashes. I'm also going to add more water. That is a good bit of ashes. More distilled water. We've got a glass stirring rod here. To stir the solution.
Now, we we'll let that heat up for a bit. Let that water get hot. And here is my prepared filter. That filter should do quite a good job of filtration, getting the impurities out. This is Alchemy with Ashes by Stephen School. Wood ashes from wood, leaves, branches, twigs. A friend of mine did some brush clearing on his property. He had fallen trees and stuff, and so I went over last night and helped him, he had made piles of the material and burned it. And I collected some of the ashes for this experiment. Let it heat up and dissolve really good. Maybe I'll turn up the temperature. There I've got it at 250. Maybe that'll speed it up a bit. And get the water to sealing faster. I'm going to zoom in and see if we can um, focus on some of the impurities. If you look over here, that is the flask connected to my Alembic distillation head. Right, there's the distillation head. And this flask, 2000 ml borosilicate flask, contains the water that I'm distilling that is uh, tap water from my kitchen faucet. It contains uh, something um, that seems to precipitate or settle out of solution when heated. And um, whatever it is, I don't want it in my body. I don't like drinking it. Whatever it is, is water soluble, but when it is heated, the, the water is heated, the, the stuff settles out of solution. And I can actually get closer here and show it. Maybe I'll turn on a, a light above. So we can try to see this material. It's kind of fuzzy, but it's there. The more uh, the water concentrates, the more easy it is to see that material that's falling out of solution in heat. It's floating around in there. 
like a white crystalline salt. Whatever it is, I don't I don't want it in my water. The water seems to be warming up a little bit. I'd like to get it good and hot. It'll dissolve the soluble salts in these ashes. Need a good dissolution. Now, in the Bible, um, there are Bible quotes about ashes, and it reminds me of the quote, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and I think there was one about, ye are the salt of the earth, and I think there was something else about ashes, but Exodus 32:20 Moses and the golden calf um, to me I understand it as an alchemy recipe um, my research indicates that Moses was an alchemist and so Exodus 32:20 uh, many people think that it was about a, a golden calf that somebody had made and I don't see it that way I understand it is that they call it gold because the color of the water when this is done normally turns out the color of liquid gold if you've watched some of my other videos you may have seen that so Moses um, burned the gold in the fire and started upon the water gold doesn't burn in the fire but wood does so my understanding of that Bible quote is that it's an alchemy recipe, not meant for everyone to understand. Alchemy with ashes. Still heating up a bit. The glass definitely feels warmer. Approaching 250 degrees Celsius. The action in the Alembic is increasing. The water seems to be, the material floating the impurities I'm removing seem to be agitated more by the by the increase in heat.
I read an article that I researched a long time ago online um, that the gladiators in ancient Rome were said to have a have had a recovery drink that supposedly um, accelerated their their healing from wounds and um, that uh, archaeologists excavated the old gladiator bones and had them tested <clears throat> and that they determined that the gladiator bones were 25 percent stronger than other people of the same time period and area and they assumed that it was because of the drink that the out the um gladiators had uh, which was ashes and water they would take ashes from the the report said they would take ashes from the campfire and put it in water and drink it. Now, doing that is a very caustic solution. It doesn't taste good. Um, it's pretty rough. It's really rough. But I've found in my experiments before, which I made videos of, that uh, by dissolving it in hot water and filtering it very well, it removed all of that nasty, nasty stuff, impurities, um, resulting in a more alkaline solution. Which looked much different than it does right now. It's starting to heat up. I can see the water in the bottom of this beaker is starting to uh, bubble a bit. It's starting to react from the heat. I'd like it to get hotter than what it is. I want a good dissolution. Alchemy with ashes. Here's another look at the ash, the pot of ashes. Ashes from wood and leaves. Getting warmer. Oh yeah, the water in the beaker is starting to move more from the heat. 
which means we're getting closer to the good dissolution. It's acting like it wants to start boiling. I think I saw some faint wisps of steam. See if we can uh, get ready to do some filtration here. I've adjusted the temperature down to 220 degrees. But you know what, I think I'm gonna turn it up. I think I'm gonna turn it back to 240 for the continuation of the distillation of the water. And once it starts distilling good, I can turn it down a bit. Okay, a final stir in the Solution of ashes and distilled water. I had to grab it with a towel. Hopefully I can pour this without spilling it. Oh, some of it spilled. Well, I may have to filter it more than once. The hotter it is, the better it filters, especially when the filters are stacked up like this. Because the sediment can form a barrier and slow down the filtration, the heat seems to help. So maybe I could have got it a little bit hotter. Either way, it's hot and it's going through. But the hotter it is, the faster it seems to go through, in my experience.
it is dripping through. Now, um, I used to research uh, Pliny the Elder, um, who was said to be an author in the first century, uh, roughly 2,000 years ago. His writings were quite extensive, but I found a needle in the haystack, and uh, it's been so many, you know, so long since I read it that I can't quote it word for word, but to get the... Uh, moral of the story of cross of what Pliny the Elder uh, was saying in the one little the needle in the haystack that I found the one little gem that I found in in the myriad writings of his he suggested um, that in his time 2,000 years ago he said let it let let thy hearth be thy medicine chest or let thy hearth be thy medicine cabinet uh, was a was the belief in his time so a hearth is a fireplace and what it contains is ashes so it matches um the report i read about the gladiators in ancient rome and their re their recovery drink that supposedly helped speed the recovery from their injuries and gave them stronger bones than other people of the same area and time period and it also matches uh moses bible, bible quote if you think about it, um, in Exodus, Exodus 32, 20, Moses and the golden calf, uh, where Moses burned the gold in the fire and struck it upon the water. Gold doesn't burn in the fire, but wood does. And my opinion of the reason why it was described as gold is because, first of all, they didn't mean for everyone to understand it, but secondly, because of the color of the resulting liquid the color of liquid gold. Look how pretty that is. Moses burned the gold in the fire. This gold, right here. This is the gold that Moses burned in the fire. Now this is Alchemy of Stephen's School, so disclaimer of course, do not try this at home. Not for consumption. The liquid coming through is a very nice golden color. I have more of the ashes. I'm going to do more experiments over time with this material. Um, so, of course, as I progress, um, I'd like to get more in-depth and more complex in the testing of this material. Uh, funding is an issue. This channel is not monetized. So, you know, this, this all comes at my own expense. There is uh, a lack of funding here. If we could get uh, 5,000 watch hours, we would probably have a chance of getting funding for this channel. But so far, we are uh, not close to that goal of that many watch hours. So that material is still dripping through. I believe the string it helps a bit due to the heavy sediment in the filter. We can uh, come in closer and take a look at that. There it is. 
All right, now the uh, distillation is starting to pick up a bit over here, distilling more water. Um, it's taken a minute because I had added more water to the flask, and so with the level of water being that high in the flask, it uh, takes a minute to get going. But it appears that now it's gotten warmed up. So now the focus is upon the filtrate, the filtered liquid. Um, in the writings of alchemists, you know, uh, when modern when people try to decipher them in modern times, they come up with a lot of different things, um, you know, assumptions. And I think it's it's based on the wording. Like uh, last night, I was talking to somebody about alchemy, um, and they they were you know and actually about this this right here, and they were telling me, uh, well, isn't it like metallic gold that's dissolved? And I was like, no, I think that's a misunderstanding. Uh, due to the wording, um, and that it's basically the wording was associated with the color of the filtered liquid, and and because the terminology um, describing it was gold, um, you know I think that people misunderstood and thought it was metallic gold dissolved, and it's not. Others have made assumptions that uh, the golden colored liquid is urine. Um, which is another semi-mistake because this is the plant realm of alchemy. This represents the plant realm, the, the plant kingdom of alchemy, working with wood, it's in the plant kingdom. So urine would be in the animal kingdom of alchemy. So that's not to say that urine is not used in alchemy or wasn't used, but it's not used in this work because this, is, this work is in the plant kingdom. This, this involves plant material, not animal material. Give that a little a little stir again. Um, the bulk of the liquid has gone through. There's still some more. It's kind of a sludge in the top now. Just going to go ahead and let it drip a little more. Give it a little stir here. Move the sediment. Let it drip. And we'll come in here closer and take a look at this. I don't have a gimbal. As I said, this channel is not monetized, so there's, you know, not really, we don't really have funding. This is just kind of done at my own expense. But there is the filtrate, the filtered liquid, the result. Now there will be further results. The entire experiment here cannot be completed today because I still will bring this down into a stone. I will co coagulate this into a stone. But to do that, I'm going to use my sun dome outdoors, which takes a little time. And right now, since it's we're, we're basically in fall or even winter, if you want to call it that, we're in the cold rainy season. Um, the sun dome works best in the heat of summer. So I would like to coagulate this down into a stone.
without burning it. So the Sun Dome, of course, is perfect for that. Coagulating it while well, the burning is avoided. Look at that dark gold liquid. Like liquid gold. I probably need to take a better thumbnail image. Now, you notice the cross on the wall. The cross, um, my understanding of the cross is it's an ancient symbol for salt. And when I coagulate this to a stone, I will have a salt stone, a crystalline salt stone, which you can see if you look through my other videos. It's actually uh, the last one that I coagulated is in there. And I believe I did that one in 2018. Our distillation over here is going well. Now we can get a better look at the material that's precipitating out of the heated water. This is what I'm separating out by distilling my water. Whatever that is, it's a, it was a solvent in the water. It was a, not visible or noticeable in the water until the water was heated and then it fell out of solution. What kind of ash? Okay, so uh, I don't have a list to identify the type of trees, but basically uh, my friend did some brush clearing on his property. Uh, there were trees that had fallen. Uh, most of it was just trees that had fallen and he was just uh, pile making piles and um, burning them. So it's the ash, to identify it, um, it's wood ash from the plant kingdom. Uh, there was leaves, tree limbs, brush, things of that nature. If we get funding for the channel, I can get more equipment and get more in, in depth, more in detail into these things. I do more more testing and stuff. Maybe get a a furnace here. A couple furnaces would be nice. Uh, but we don't we don't have enough watch hours on this channel to get funding to get monetized. So that's kind of been holding holding me back a bit on the on the funding getting funded. So this liquid in my opinion looks looks quite nice that is the liquid from burning the wood material um, and then uh, distilling the water and dissolving uh, heating the ashes in the distilled water stirring it with the glass stirring rod um, to dissolve the soluble elements and then filtering them. I have 10 paper cu type coffee filters there and two reusable type coffee filters. So that's 12 coffee filters right there. Because when this stuff is first dissolved in the, in the water, it's, it's caustic and it's nasty. It's nasty. So this is a process of purification by fire and water, which is the ancient symbols of alchemy. Um, uh, the ancient symbols of fire and water were a pyramid, an upright pyramid, and an upside down pyramid, basically. And then they were superimposed on top of one or the other to form a sort of a star. Uh, but they are the ancient symbols of fire and water, which is the formula of alchemy. and matches this work. If you're interested in this, maybe maybe share the video around. Hopefully we can get the watch hours up, maybe get some more subscribers. If we can get uh, the, the funding, then we can probably get more more in depth in these experiments until then 
Thank you for watching. This is Alchemy of Stephen's School. Do not try this at home. Subscribe for updates. And have a nice day. I'm going to be signing off now.